Welcome back, everybody. This is Pat Healy. Today, the story of our new 64 continues with an in-depth look at the incredible Viking build process. We start with a clean slate of paper each time we go into a new project and we look at things from the standpoint of what materials are going to support the needs of that specific project or that specific part as we're developing it. Um, there are places where we'll utilize foam core materials as opposed to a balsa core or no core material at all. There are some places where we'll use customized fiberglass materials, uh, reinforcements, We've gone through the years, have gone from just using a conventional fab mat, which is a 24-15 woven material, to hybrid materials, to carbon fiber. We realized that we were able to use the properties of the carbon fiber in certain areas of the boat by incorporating it into a, an e-glass hybrid material. So we were able to get thickness, we were able to get stiffness, but we were still taking advantage of the carbon fiber and also minimizing the amount of carbon fiber that we were using in the boat that wasn't doing what we needed the carbon fiber to do. We use a fair amount of carbon fiber throughout all of the parts of the boat. There's always a little bit somewhere where the property of the carbon fiber really outshines any other way of building it. So in those cases, we look at it, we sit down, we run through the numbers, particularly working with some of the outside vendors that support us very well and we look at saying, okay, if we need to do reinforcement here, is carbon fiber the right material to do it? If we're, if we're thickness constrained, we will typically lean towards the carbon fiber. If we're not thickness constrained, then we look to say with an e-glass. Well, resin infusion is a process that really initially came about as a way to control the materials that you're putting into the boat in the build and being able to get out of your build a precise, repeatable end result. Um, one of the other benefits that was really starting to move infusion across the board has been a lot of the emission control type things and moving towards closed molding in general to help the environment, to help people out in the field. By going into the infusion process, we really started, we started to look at it from the standpoint of optimizing the build. How are we going to make sure that we get what we want out of the fiberglass structure and how are we gonna make sure we get it all the time? So we started infusing years ago with our fuel tanks. Um, we do resin infusion in, in, in quite a few parts. Obviously the hull is the first part that we uh, do a lot of infusion on and that was really driven by the fact that we could get much larger sections of dry laminate into the boat at a single time. Um, but other parts that we've looked at and improved upon the years, a lot of things on the interior, an interior air box, for example, in our engine rooms, we infuse those parts. We infuse a lot of our consoles that we do. We're looking to increase the infusion process on more parts every day. That's not to say that infusion is the save all. So hand lamination isn't something that's no longer done. It's still a pretty important part of the whole process. Uh, some areas might be uh, a console seating area, or there might be an area, say, um, in one of our deck areas with the complexity that we have with the mezzanine areas and the gutters, being able to go in there and have the guys that are very talented in rolling out fiberglass, roll that out, know you're not gonna have air, know that everything is gonna be the way you want it to be. Please stay tuned for part two of our deep dive into the construction of the exciting new Viking 64.